All right, good morning, students. So um, I think last week we spoke about um, what happens after fertilization. Okay, um, basically the fertilized egg, which is known as the zygote, will then undergo a series of cell division to give you the embryo. All right, and we actually spoke about how the embryo had to um, be implanted into the thick uterine lining in order for the formation of a fetus. So today we are going to be talking about what happens um, in that process of implantation. Okay, and this is going to be quite an important part of the chapter other than the menstrual cycle. So we're going to be talking about the formation of the placenta. Now you might hear this word placenta quite often. You might be thinking, what is this? Okay, some people say, you know, um, placenta is very important because, um, you know, it, it really provides nutrients for the baby. So we want to know exactly why and how this actually looks like and um, how come it's able to do the job after the corpus luteum has disintegrated. So can you remember, Miss Lee mentioned that the corpus luteum is actually the one that produces progesterone until the placenta is formed. So what is this placenta? Now some of your own pets, uh, in, if you're very interested, you will actually know that dogs um, or even wild animals, when they deliver their young, they actually eat the placenta because they do not want the scent of the baby to be picked up by predators. Okay, but thank God human beings do not do that. Nah? Okay, but human beings, what we, we do is that some of the mothers have the option of uh, freezing the umbilical blood system because that actually contains a lot of stem cells which can be used if the baby has a de degenerative disease. Now before that, let's watch this um, video which is about a short three minute video. It's a very interesting video. It shows you how you are formed, okay, and um, what parts are actually formed throughout your nine months of pregnancy. And you will definitely see the features of the placenta and the umbilical cord much clearer in this video. So uh, sit back and watch this three and a half minutes video begins in the uterus where a sperm fertilizes an egg if the sperm carries an X chromosome the baby will become female while a Y chromosome will result in the baby becoming male the fertilized egg or zygote divides repeatedly as it travels through the fallopian tube implanting itself on the uterine wall to form both the embryo and a specialized organ known as the placenta Found only in eutherian or placental mammals, the placenta will manage waste and provide key nutrients, oxygen, and hormones via the umbilical cord. The brain, which will continue to grow and develop throughout the pregnancy, makes up nearly half of the embryo in these early stages. As the eyes, nose, ears, and mouth, along with all major organs, continue to develop in month three, the baby will begin to look more and more human with each passing day. The second trimester lasts from weeks 13 to 27. The fetus will more than double in size during this time, and soon its movements may be felt by the mother. Hearing first develops around week 18, but the fetus will not respond to sounds outside of the womb until approximately week 25. Starting at week 28 and lasting up until delivery, the third trimester is a time for final touches such as eyelashes and taste buds. With most major development complete, the fetus will gain nearly half a pound a week. To make room for this rapid growth, the mother's internal organs adjust significantly throughout the pregnancy. Dropping lower into the pelvis, a fetus typically turns heads down in preparation for birth. Most bones will have hardened by this time, though the skull will remain relatively soft to ease the delivery process. Labor is divided into stages, beginning with the dilation of the cervix and resulting in the delivery of both the baby and the placenta. Despite thousands of years of human pregnancies, scientific understanding has only recently begun to catch up, leading to an increase in success and safety for both mother and child. As our understanding of pregnancy continues to develop, so do technology and reproductive medicine, with much more in store for the future of pregnancy. Okay, so that's quite an interesting video, right? I hope you actually enjoyed it. Now let's move on to um, what we're going to be covering today. We're going to be talking about the development of the placenta and why this placenta is such an important part 
of um, the process of the development of the uh, fetus from the embryo. So you can have a look at this picture over here in your notes you can see a developing embryo turning into a fetus you can see this connection that the baby okay the fetus has with the mother's uterine wall so the whole thing is actually the uterine wall okay so this connection is known as the umbilical cord and you can see three um, y-shaped structures here and if you think carefully it reminds you very much like the velus in your small intestines eh? um, so let's start so we say that after implantation, you see these finger-like projections, they are known as villi. Okay, these are actually part of the placenta. They will grow out from the embryo, okay, from the ball of cells into the uterine lining. Now this is when implantation is known to be successful. Okay, so when implantation is successful is because of the growth of these embryonic villi. Now, why do we call them embryonic villi? Because it looks like the villus in the small intestine and it comes from the embryo. Okay, so these are known as your embryonic villi. Okay, this is your uterine lining and that's why the lining must be thick, you see, so that it is able to support this growth. And then there are also blood capillaries inside your this embryonic villi. Now, all these three structures actually form your placenta. So the placenta is basically an organ in the mother's womb that contains the lining, the blood capillaries, as well as the embryonic villi. The umbilical cord is not part of the placenta. The umbilical cord connects the placenta to the fetus. Alright, so there you go. So this umbilical cord is basically the attachment or the bridge between the fetus to the placenta. Now this bridge is very important. Recall your pollen tube. Without the pollen tube, it will be impossible for the male gamete to be delivered to the female gamete sitting inside the ovule. So in order for the substances that are going to be exchanged in the placenta with the fetus, the umbilical cord is very important. So now let's take a look um, at what this embryonic villi and blood capillaries um, in detail actually look like. Okay, now you saw this in the video. So you can see this curvy, whirly structure over here. This is also known as the umbilical cord. All right, so this will be known as the umbilical cord. All right, and your placenta is actually this particular organ here. This little structure over here is actually the head of the developing fetus. All right, so now we are going to look at... Um, magnified version of one of the embryonic villi so you can see how many embryonic villi are there over here there is one two three four five six okay there are six embryonic okay villi and in each of the embryonic villi contains each ev i'm going to use a short form embryonic villi actually contains your blood capillaries now we mentioned the last lecture during the life lesson blood capillaries are so important because they are the site of exchange and that means there must be exchange between the fetus and the mother so obviously you would know that just like the blood capillaries okay that exists between your body cells and your bloodstream you know that useful substances go in to your body cells and harmful substances are actually removed so this is actually going to be quite similar in the embryonic villi so let's have a look at it in detail okay now each embryonic villi consists of a series of fetal blood capillaries now these blood capillaries are similar to the capillaries that you see in your body that means there will be an arterial end and there will be a venule end so you may want to write this in your notes okay this is the arterial end and this will be the venule end and just like the color suggests the arterial end will basically carry oxygenated and useful substances whereas the venial end will carry deoxygenated substances co2 gases and harmful okay waste products that need to be excreted so obviously this direction you can see direction below okay this direction for the arterial end of the capillaries is actually going towards the baby and this is actually going away from the baby towards the mother 
Okay, so um, based on the direction of movement, this blue large vein, uh, this blue large blood vessel here is known as the umbilical artery. Now, Miss Lee actually said on Friday that this system is very similar to the pulmonary system that we learned in the transport of humans, where your pulmonary artery is one of the only other arteries in your body that transports deoxygenated blood. But how do we remember? So Miss Lee is going to give you a tip now. Now, the word artery is because it's carrying blood away. So, away from the heart, right? So, this is actually away from the developing heart of the fetus. Okay, and therefore, this is actually the umbilical vein. Alright, and why is this known as the umbilical vein? Because the direction of veins is, very good, I can hear, towards the heart and so it is carrying blood towards the heart of the fetus and the umbilical artery will then carry blood away from the fetus towards the mother okay so any blood that is being carried away from the fetus to the mother is probably because it needs to get rid of harmful substances and waste products like carbon dioxide and any blood that comes from the mother towards the baby it's probably carrying a lot of oxygen and is rich in nutrients okay so one common question they will always ask you is they will ask you to distinguish the composition between the umbilical artery and the umbilical vein so you need to remember umbilical artery is away from the fetus Okay, umbilical vein is towards the fetus heart. This is away from the fetus heart. So therefore, this will be carrying useful substances as well as oxygen. And this will be carrying CO2 as well as waste products. I hope that um, helps you with the understanding a little bit. You can always pause the video here so that you can complete or write down or annotate in your notes. Okay, so that's why we mentioned this is the umbilical vein. Now, this is the placenta. So, Miss Lee mentioned in the previous slide, the placenta is made up of the fetal blood capillaries, your embryonic villi, which are the structures that contain the fetal capillaries, as well as the mother's uterine wall. Now, the mother's uterine wall, if you can recall in your menstrual cycle, is very thick with blood capillaries. So, the blood capillaries... Alright, the blood capillaries that are inside, okay, blood capillaries inside the uterine wall are not these fetal blood capillaries. Huh? These are what we call your maternal blood spaces. Okay, so the blood capillaries inside this uterine wall belong to the mother and you can clearly see that it's separated from the blood capillaries of the fetus. Okay, and we will talk about the significance of this later on. Okay, so let's move on. So now let's study the fetal blood system. We say that they are separated. You can see that it's separated from the mother's blood capillaries. The mother's blood capillaries are in the area that is pink here, whereas the fetal blood capillaries are surrounded by your embryonic villi membrane. Eh? Okay, and um, they are surrounded by your maternal blood spaces. Alright, so these are your fetal blood capillaries and this will be your maternal blood spaces over here. So you can see that they are actually um, separated from one another via the membrane of your embryonic villi. Okay, so basically what happens is that there will be diffusion of nutrients, gases and waste products between these two surfaces. So between the fetal blood capillaries and the maternal blood capillaries, it allows for the process of diffusion. You will need to know that we are going to be talking about the process of diffusion. Okay, take note of the arrow as well. Eh? And remember, you may want to write this down on this particular slide. Okay, this is your umbilical vein and this will be your umbilical artery. Always remember direction from fetus heart. Okay, now let's move on. So, um... Now that we have known what is the placenta, which is actually made up of your embryonic villi, your 
fetal blood capillaries as well as you can see this yellow i mean sorry not yellow this blue and reddish curly woolly structure inside the uterine wall that is your mother's um maternal blood system huh? so i'm just going to uh, annotate here you can also do that in your notes okay this is your maternal blood capillaries all right these are your uh, embryonic Veli, okay, and these are your fetal blood um, capillaries. Now, Miss Lee has adjusted the, the order of the slide, so just find this slide that talks about the umbilical cord. Okay, now the umbilical cord is actually not part of the placenta. So the placenta is made up of one, made up of two, and three structures. Okay, the umbilical cord is actually known as the attachment okay so it attaches the developing baby to the placenta all right so this is known as your umbilical cord and the umbilical cord has actually two major blood vessels we've seen that that is your umbilical artery and your umbilical vein okay it's made up of two umbilical arteries and one umbilical vein all right so um, what's the function of the umbilical cord? Number one, um, the umbilical vein basically transports oxygenated blood and food substances from the placenta to the fetus. I think you, you heard about that, right? That is the fetal blood system that we are talking about. Now, you might be very confused. You might say, okay, Miss Lee, so this fetal blood system, uh, it consists of the umbilical cord as well as the fetal blood capillaries yes but it's only the fetal blood capillaries that are part of the placenta the fetal blood capillaries that fuse eventually at the end to give you the umbilical artery and the umbilical vein are not part of the placenta they are on the outside of the placenta okay so your umbilical arteries are important also because since it is um, bringing blood away from the baby is actually allowing the fetus to be able to excrete carbon dioxide as well as waste products now you remember the major organs although it starts to develop from the third month onwards it is not fully developed yet okay so you may want to write this down all right major organs such as the kidney okay the liver as well as the lungs are not developed well yet so that means the placenta will need to do the job of these organs it will need to do an excretion job by the kidneys and the lungs it needs to get rid of urea excess water co2 via the lungs it will also need to get rid of urea that is produced okay so basically the placenta is also known as an excretory um, has got excretory functions uh, okay for the baby okay now this is actually quite an important slide because there will be some essay questions that ask you to talk about the significance of the umbilical cord and the fetal blood system referring to the umbilical vein and the umbilical arteries okay so why is the fetal blood system separated we mentioned this number one the mother's blood pressure would be too high for the fetus and if the mother's blood pressure is too high it can cause the tiny fetal blood capillaries to burst and this will cause internal bleeding and the eventual death of the baby if the fetus and the mother's blood type is different so for example if the mother happens to be um, blood group a she will have A antigens and antibody B. If um, the baby is blood group B, the baby will actually have B antigens and uh, antibody A and this will cause agglutination. And agglutination is one of the highest causes of um, natural abortion in the baby um, because the baby's blood has clotted. So this is something that is very dangerous and that is why they must be kept separate. Okay, so we mentioned that once the agglutination occurs, it can be both fatal to the mother as well as the fetus because of incompatible blood groups. So let's talk about the function of the placenta. Now, this is a very common essay question. You might want to write this down in your slide. Okay, so a, a typical question that they can ask you would be, um, you know, describe the 
describe the development of the placenta then you must talk about how um, the placenta actually develops from um, the embryo growing finger-like projections in the uterine wall to form the embryonic villi to have the fetal capillaries and then you know having diffusion of substances between those fetal capillaries with the mother's capillaries they may also ask you to explain the significance of the placenta okay so first of all the placenta actually has a main function it allows the the placenta actually is sort of like performing like the lungs of the baby yeah? why do we say that because it allows oxygen to be delivered to the baby okay it also allows the baby or the fetus to excrete carbon dioxide so it is functioning sort of like the lungs of the baby so i'm going to annotate and write this down here so it is number one can be seen as the lungs of the baby because it allows oxygen as well as uh, carbon dioxide to be exchanged between the fetus and the mother okay uh, it can also be known as the digestive or what we consider the small intestine they perform an absorb absorption function very similar to the small intestine because it allows food substances okay to diffuse into the fetus blood very much like your small intestine villi right um, basically it allows substances to enter nutrients like glucose and amino acid to be carried into the bloodstream so sometimes an essay question they might ask you describe how the placenta um, performs um, or describe how the placenta can be known as the lungs of a baby then you can say oh because the placenta allows oxygen to diffuse into the umbilical um uh, umbilical vein brought to the baby okay and it allows carbon dioxide from the fetus to enter the umbilical artery and then branches into the fetal blood capillaries to be diffused to the mother's blood system okay then how come it's able to act as a digestive system as well because it allows food substances to be delivered to the fetus via absorption and through diffusion um, the placenta also performs a excretory um, organ a secretory function and that's why it can also be known as the kidneys of the baby because it allows excretory products to be removed via diffusion from the fetal blood to the mother's blood okay um, the placenta also basically allows the diffusion of antibodies from the mother's blood to the fetus blood now the purpose of these antibodies is to basically serve as a natural defense okay as an immuno defense against diseases okay so this is actually a very important function of the placenta as well and um, at this point i would like you to annotate in your notes that the placenta also has an endocrine function okay and the endocrine function is that it continues to secrete progesterone now it takes over okay it takes over the role of the corpus luteum so once um, the placenta is fully functional the corpus luteum that is inside the ovary will then be disintegrated okay because the placenta will now carry out the function of the secretion of progesterone recall what is the function of progesterone it basically causes the uterine lining to thicken further but now we are not so concerned about it being thickened further but we are concerned with it being maintained at the highest level okay at the thickest level so that is why progesterone must still be maintained because the effectiveness okay the effectiveness of this placenta is dependent very much uh, on the uterine lining thickness okay so the u stands for the uterine lining thickness if not it's going to be quite impossible for the placenta to be fully functional and effective so this is a very important slide it is a common essay question you definitely will need to remember the information here but i think what is more important is not just about the memory but it's about to link this to the different chapters that we learned about the respiratory system and how the lungs actually allow oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange but the placenta seems to be doing that now okay your excretory system which is your kidneys the placenta is doing that for you 
okay, it is performing an endocrine function. The placenta is doing that for the fetus. Okay, it is also performing the function of your small intestine in the absorption process of food. Okay, as well as the protective function of your blood groups, uh, protective function of your blood via antibody production. But the baby is not producing antibodies just yet. Basically, the antibodies is coming from the mother. So you can see how the placenta is basically double heading. It is actually carrying out a lot of roles. It is the lungs, it's the kidneys, it's the digestive system, okay, and it's the immune system of the baby as well. I'm going to now let you watch a short video that will quite nicely summarize whatever that we have been covering so far about the um, placenta and its functions. The placenta is formed from the endometrium and extra embryonic chorion and has a rich blood supply. The fetal and maternal circulatory systems do not directly connect, however, so maternal blood and fetal blood cells do not mix. The placenta has three functions, transporting nutrients and oxygen, removing wastes, and the production of hormones such as human chorionic gonadotropin, progesterone, and estrogen. These activities are essential for maintaining the pregnancy and promoting normal fetal development. By the end of the third week after conception, the placenta covers approximately 20% of the uterus. All exchanges between the mother and embryo, and eventually the fetus, take place through the placenta. Molecules, including food and oxygen, diffuse from the maternal bloodstream through the placental membrane to blood vessels that carry them to the fetus. Similarly, waste products, such as carbon dioxide, toxins, such as urea and ammonia, transported from the fetus to the maternal bloodstream via the placenta. The wastes are disposed of by the maternal lungs and kidneys. So, we have now spoken about the major chunk of the placenta. Phew, you can wipe off the sweat on your head. We are done with that. You can always go back to the previous um, you can always rewind this lecture and just listen to it again um, if you need any more clarification. So now that we have spoken about the placenta, which let's revise, is the embryonic villi with the fetal capillaries, not the umbilical cord, huh? okay, with the fetal capillaries and the maternal capillaries in the uterine wall, you will notice that this developing fetus huh, is not levitating like a ghost in space, okay? It's actually covered by this um, membranous area here. Now, this membrane area is known as an amniotic sac. Now, what is a sac? A sac is basically a circular structure that contains fluid in your body that is surrounded by a covering or a layer of uh, cells. So, the embryonic sac is basically this membrane, okay, that encloses the developing embryo inside liquid, okay, and this liquid. This whole thing is known as the embryonic cavity. So this is the embryonic sac. The layer here is known as the embryonic sac. Okay, now the fluid inside this, which is the blue color here, is known as your embryonic fluid. Okay, the entire space is known as the cavity because cavity is known as like a location or a compartment or a hole. Alright, um, so this is a very interesting thing. Actually, before you are born, uh, you can actually breathe in water. And that's why they are saying that actually the best time to introduce babies to swimming is when they are just born because it is very similar to the environment that they are in because they are covered in water. They are actually in the liquid. And you know, in those um, Chinese drama, right, when they say, oh my gosh, look, um, I'm going to deliver, and then like water gushes out from their dress, right? So basically, what is happening is that the water bag has burst. What is this water bag? This water bag is actually known as the embryonic sac. In layman's term, this is known as the water bag, okay? And the water that is gushing out is actually known as your amniotic fluid. Okay, so basically, when you before you are born, you're actually f um, um, moving around and dancing inside this uh, liquid here covered by a sac in this space known as the cavity attached to the placenta via your umbilical cord. So I think biology is such an interesting subject because it's just really the beauty of life. 
Okay, so the embryo will continue to develop from a developing ball of cells all the way to once the major organs are formed, it is known as the fetus. Now, when we talk about the major organs being formed, it doesn't mean that the organs are formed um, completely. Uh, they will still continue to develop all the way. Okay, so what is the purpose of the amniotic sac? All right, the amniotic sac contains the amniotic fluid, and this is also another important structure question, which I had originally set for your prelim. Okay, the amniotic fluid basically has got a few functions. Huh? Number one, it supports and it cushions the fetus. Um, what's the meaning of the word cushion? For example, you don't put a baby on a hard floor, right? Because there's not enough support or it's not soft enough. So you want to put the baby in the baby cot with a baby mattress. Now, the, the purpose of the baby mattress is so that when the baby turns and tosses when he sleeps, he or she will be able to sleep in comfort. So the purpose of the amniotic fluid is to basically to support and to cushion the fetus. Um, Another thing is you will notice that if you go and swim, you will notice that if you kick somebody in the water, you don't feel the pain so much because water is a very good shock absorber. Okay, liquid, the medium liquid is a very good shock absorber. And so the purpose of the fluid uh, is to also serve as a protection, uh, is to protect the fetus from any form of physical or mechanical shock. And how it does that is by being a very good shock absorber. Um, okay, so this is the first function. Number one is to support the fetus, uh, is to provide it with a good environment for it to grow. Um, there's no diffusion of food that takes place in the amniotic fluid. Nah? All diffusion of food basically takes place via the umbilical cord being sent from the placenta. Okay, um, the fluid also basically serves as a form of lubrication. So when that is why the water bag must burst before delivery um, so that it allows the vaginal canal, which is known as the vagina, the birth canal, to be lubricated. If not, it's going to be very painful during birth delivery. Okay, and um, because it is a big enough area here, you will notice that the fetus will be able to move around rather freely. And uh, you heard just now in the video, the very first video, they said that by um, week 18, the fetus is able to listen to sounds and able to respond to it and able to move. So why is it able to move? Because there's space, you see. And what gives it space is basically this amniotic cavity and the amniotic fluid that supports, cushions it, absorbs shock, therefore protects it. And, um, and it's also a form of lubrication when the baby is about to be delivered. Okay, so we have come to the end of our O-Level syllabus 18.5. Um, the next part, which is the, the next lesson on Friday, before your Google Meet with me, will be um, e-learning. I will not be including any lecture for this because I think the spread of HIV and methods to control the disease, you can easily read up on your own. So what I will do is I will put these sets of slides on the Google site. It will not be found as... Um, uh, video it will just be found as a set of PDF slides so please download the PDF slides and have a look at it and um, we will then complete our Google Meet on Friday and you can ask me any questions now um, before you go please remember that the next set of assignment before Friday is for you to complete all your MCQ questions on the tenure series as well as question 1 on page 244 so that must be done before your Google Meet lesson with me, where I will give you the answers and go through the questions with you. So thank you very much for our 7 I hope that you have enjoyed the lecture today. And um, keep safe, be well, and I hope to see you really very soon. Bye-bye.